what he did in his last moments was get on the radio and famously say, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. So May 18th, 1980, a date that will live in Northwest infamy, to repurpose a line, from FDR, a lot of things in the last 40 years, a lot of people who have been born, i.e. me, who weren't even alive at that time. So we are anxious to hear a little bit about the science behind the eruption then and the science still going on now around that iconic Northwest landscape. Nick, what have you found in your reporting? In some ways, the mountain is still the same as it was then. You know, we have kind of continual earthquakes happening far below the surface, magma kind of boiling up from the, from the earth and trying to reach the surface. Um, so in that way, the volcano is the same. It's still active. Uh, it's going to erupt at some point in the future. But on top is where things have really kind of changed. And I really looked at a part of the mountain called the Pumice Plain. That's between the volcano and Spirit Lake, which if anybody has any knowledge of Mount St. Helens, they'd recall that lake. It was right in the path of the, the flows and the ash and the mud flows and all that stuff. And the lake doubled its surface area right away. It got choked off on the outlet. Uh, it was just pure devastation from the mountain to that lake. And the pumice plain, as I said, lies between them. That was completely obliterated of life, sterilized is how the Mount St. Helens Institute describes it. Uh, about two years after the eruption, Prairie Lupin showed up and that was the beginning. And we've had decades of slow regeneration and return of life. They've done thousands of studies. Uh, scientists have been there for 40 years, the same scientists looking at the same patch of land to see how it's changed. So it's it's been a pretty interesting um, science experiment, I would say, for the for the scientists of the Pacific Northwest. People who have visited the area around Mount St. Helens, the National Volcanic Monument, might be familiar with the Johnston Ridge Observatory. That's named after a person, David Johnston. Remind us, who was David Johnston? David Johnston, a, a real fascinating guy. At the time of the eruption, he was 30 years old. He had a doctorate. He was a, a volcanologist. And he was on that ridge the morning of the eruption. And, you know, the eruption happened at around 8.32 in the morning on a Sunday on May 18th. It followed a, a 5.1 magnitude earthquake, which basically knocked a bunch of dirt and earth off the side of the volcano and allowing the eruption to shoot off the side right towards Mr. Johnston. He was about six miles away from the mountain, but they guessed that he had less than a minute to react and to live. What he did in his last moments was get on the radio and famously say, Vancouver, Vancouver, this is it. And then he was gone. And what's interesting and, and tragic as well is he wasn't supposed to be there that morning. He had traded shifts with another scientist, this guy named Harry Glicken. Interestingly enough, but also very tragic, about 10 or 11 years later, Harry Glicken was on a, a volcano in Japan called Mount Unzo. And he too was killed in an eruption. And those are the only two American volcano scientists that have ever been killed in eruptions. We should, of course, remember, as you noted, that Mount St. Helens is still an active volcano and it still very much could and will erupt in the future, but in not the same way that it did in 1980. What are some of the ways that scientists are studying Mount St. Helens for how it might erupt and how it might behave in the future? There was an earthquake that knocked a cap off the mountain and allowed it to erupt much more uh, destructively than it would have otherwise. During that same eruptive period, there were six years where it was still kind of erupting and building itself. It quieted down in 1986, and then in 2004 to 2008, it had another active period. And it, so it continues to this day. In fact, we're seeing the similar earthquake activity we saw between the 80 eruption and the 2004 eruption. So another eruption is right around the corner, but 1980 was unique in that it knocked its cap off and allowed this, this molten rock and gas to shoot out at the side in a way that nobody would really anticipated or guessed. The next eruption we see, they're thinking, they don't really know, of course, because it's in the future, that it would be similar to the 2004-2008 eruption and not the 1980. 1980 just had a whole set of circumstances that made it what it, what it was. Well, it's fascinating science and interesting Northwest and world history. We thank you for joining us to talk about it today, Nick. Thanks, Scott. Find more on these and other topics at our website, nwpb.org. Thank you for joining us. Stay safe, stay healthy out there in the unique Northwest. Mm -hmm.